When you walked in, the first thing I thought was she looks fantastic, and you've Thank been you. you hurt your it's toe. It's amazing what a suntan can do. <laughs> but you're always tan. I mean, <laughs> I'm a tan. <laughs> but no, you hurt your foot in New York. I mean, you have no, in, um, I was actually doing two speaking engagements in Bermuda, of all places, hard life, and I slipped off a ramp coming off the beach, total muppet moment, and f toe went left field, and and I, it turns out I got this spiral fracture. Six weeks on, it's still not healed, so I still can't run. So, um, so how do you deal with injury? Because age groupers are insane. We try to push through it. We do stupid things. Are you, what are you doing to, to deal? I often do as I say and not as I do <laughs> when it comes to injury. You know, I, I have been known not to be the most sensible of people when dealing with injury. I have a high pe pain, pre pain threshold. Um, and, you know, part and parcel of being a successful athlete is a tolerance for pain, a tolerance for dis discomfort, developing the mental tools that you need to override that discomfort, whether it's in training and racing. And I tend to do that sometimes with, with injury, but I think slowly I've, I've learned. I've learned a lot more to respect my body, to see the long term rather than, rather than the short term game. So the doctor said, you can't run for six weeks. I haven't run for six weeks, but you focus on what you can do. You take responsibility for what you've done. You get the best medical care that you can. You get good diagnosis. You find out about what the prognosis is. And you focus on what you can do. It's the most important thing. Is it making you a little batty? No, because you modify your own expectations. You know, for example, I knew... This year, I would not be able to do the training that has become normal for me. Sure. You know, I rationalize as, a, as an Ironman athlete that four to six hours a day of training is normal, <laughs> you know? And it's not really that normal, <laughs> is it? <laughs> so now I modify my expectations, and now if I can get one hour or two hours, maybe even three hours in, that, that's great, and I have to be happy with what I can do. So. Yes, not being out of run is, is, is not sending me batty. It's slightly frustrating because running is a very, very time efficient thing to do if you're only in a city for, for half, you know, half a day or whatever. But I've, I can still bike. I can, I can swim. I can walk now without pain, which is good. I did a bit of kayaking. So, yeah, I, I, do, what I do what I can. And um, tell me a little bit about the book tour. Uh, you're, you're traveling, so now you're experiencing traveling and training? Is that, is that no, uh, like I said, I modify my own expectations, and that, that's in part why I decided to take this year off, because there were so many other opportunities, including the book tour, which I knew would mean that I couldn't train as I believe I need to to be a very, very successful athlete. And I will not race if I cannot be the best athlete I can be on that day. Mediocrity doesn't interest me. So that's why, I, in part, why I took a, a step away. So you, I modified my expectations about what training is, what you know, sufficient training volume is. And my focus now, my goal now, is to promote the book and the messages that, um, therein. And that's a theme in your book. You're a little bit competitive and a little bit... Did someone say little bit? <laughs> well, I'm trying to be... <laughs> Thank you for being kind. <laughs> Was it hard to put that on paper? No. No? Um, I knew... I, I wanted the book, in part, to be a vehicle to convey some really important messages. But I knew that in order to be able to effectively convey those messages, I had to humanize myself. So people tend to put me and other athletes on pedestals, you know, where there's bionic superhumans, and they can't identify with us. So I had to reveal the real me, the rawness of me, that I bleed, that I cry, that I get stressed, that I'm anal and obsessive, very controlling, that I've had battles with body image, eating disorders, for example. And I hope people realize then that I've managed to overcome these problems or channel these traits into more healthier occupations and gone on to achieve my dreams. And if I can do that, then so can they. And it might not take them to the top of the world necessarily, but it will enable them to achieve more than they ever thought possible. So that's, I guess, the essential theme of my book. And what's been the response to, to people as they've been reading it? 
I have to say I've been incredibly overwhelmed by the response. Um, I didn't set out to write a Chrissy Training Bible. I wanted to write a book that transcended triathlon, that even transcended sport, that appealed to people whether they were triathletes or whether they'd even, never even considered getting off the couch and running a 5K. And the response that I've gotten is that, that that's the case. So I've hopefully succeeded in my aim to write a book that inspires and encourages people, whether they're triathletes. Or, or otherwise. So I've been, I've been really overwhelmed by the response that I've received from the book, um, and it seems as though those messages that I really hope that I could impart are being received and internalised by the people that read it. And what about your family? I mean, there's some some tough stuff in there to read, and, and secrets that you had about bulimia and, and, and dealing with that. What, what was their response to that? Yeah, it was, it was difficult for them to read. Um, I obviously spoke to them before publicizing things, as I did with other people that have played a part in, in, in my life. You know, I, I was sharing my story, but I was also in part sharing aspects of, of their lives right. too. And, and I felt really strongly that I needed to get their approval of, or an endorsement for doing that, including with Brett. You know, Brett knew that we were going to, to publish certain emails or sure. that we were going to address things about about his past. And I wanted to make sure that I was 100% honest and clear and that I wasn't um, saying things that people m might be offended by or, 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 or upset by. So, uh, you know, friends and family have, have really enjoyed the book. Um, the, I think one of the people, or it, it mattered most to me that my parents and my brother enjoyed the book, and especially my brother. Yeah. And for him to finish the book and say, you should be proud of this, it's amazing. It meant an incredible amount to me. It's huge, it's a great compliment. It's a great compliment, right? Yeah, it is, and it it makes me happy because I was in part sharing his story, and I wanted him to be happy with that. He's played a huge part in my life, um, obviously, but you know, and been a, a huge support to me, and it meant a lot to me that he enjoyed it. You want to talk about fun stuff instead? We can. I don't want to make you cry. It's okay. I know, Jesus, I'm going to be the guy who made the happiest woman I know cry. That was, that was a quite funny, going back to just what you said about <laughs> did people like the book. The only negative um, review that I've unfortunately read was someone that said that, um, um, that the book felt soggy before by the end because all I did was cry. I cried when I was happy, I cried when I was sad, I cried when I lost, I cried when I won. I'm the most emotional, narcissistic person she'd ever read about and she feels sorry for Tom. <laughs> and I read that and I thought, oh no. <laughs> but that's the only negative comment I've received. So if that's the case, then I can live with it. <laughs> wow. Is it hard to read stuff like that? Because normally people write about you in the, these glowing sort of oh. like you're a superhero type columns and I think with anything in life you know you get 10 compliments and you'll get um, one criticism sure. you know and the same when I didn't race Kona 10 people were really concerned the other one was saying oh she's taking drugs you know so or, you always have that that one person that makes a, a negative comment you know I've had criticism in when I was in New York because I didn't do a a Twitter run. I didn't invite people to go on a run with me with my broken toe, you know, and you can't please everyone all the time. And I'm realizing that. And I think that's enabling me, that realization is enabling me to grow because I've always been that sort of person that craves other people's approval um, and wants to please everybody. And if I feel that I don't, I berate myself. And slowly I'm realizing that I do what I can and I have to be have to be content with that because there's always going to be people for whom you're not doing enough. <laughs> it's, that's a great lesson. I mean, wherever you learn that in life, it's yeah. a great lesson. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's, you talked about Kona real briefly. Um, some people have said, and this is your chance, uh, that when Marinda won, there's an asterisk by it. Is, that, is there I an asterisk? I would disagree strongly. Okay. 
um, Marinda was a, a worthy champion. I think as a professional athlete, it's your responsibility to get to that help, that, that start line healthy um, or prepared to, to challenge for, for the victory. And I wasn't on that start line. She's the worthy and rightful world, you know, world champion. And I never put an asterisk by that. And her performance showed that they didn't necessarily meet, need me there that day to, to raise their game either. And, and you and I have something in common, is that we both swim in the freak of nature, which Good choice. you probably look much better in it than I do. But tell me about, what are your thoughts on your that? Your abs look as good as... Only, my abs um, only look actually good, good. in that wet seat. Otherwise, nice. I have one yeah. ab. Um, but, I mean, I, I t- actually tested it. I took it to Kona and, and swam it. Swam there in yeah. Kona. But what do you think of that? Do people want a $1,500 wet, wetsuit? Um, I was part of the um, development process, as was Andy Potts and other athletes. I know the investment that's gone into making that that suit, the very, very best wetsuit that's on the market. I think what's really important in our industry, whether we're talking about wetsuits, tri-suits, bikes, wheels, that you have products that suit all, all, all wallets, you know, all, sure. all price brackets. So if someone cannot afford a freak of nature, well then they've, they've got the Cat 1 wetsuit or the Cat 3 wetsuit that is extremely reasonably priced and is great especially for, a, you know, a novice or, you know, a, an intermediate um, athlete to use. So it's an expensive suit. Of course, it, of course it is. You get what you pay for. It's a phenomenal product. Do people need it? Well, we don't need anything that we use in this sport and they're, and they're luxuries. And if you want to invest in that, it will make you a stronger and a faster swimmer. But you don't have to have it. And we talked about this last time, but I want to see what your answer is this time. Dancing with the star, especially you come in now, your hair's pulled back, you look like you just got done being in Argentina. <laughs> Would you do it? Um, you should have seen me after I just got done in Argentina. <laughs> I didn't look like I hadn't showered for about two weeks. Um, would I do it? Um, if the people, that the person that I was dancing with didn't value their toes, because I'd probably <laughs> tread on them or trip them up, I'd love to do something like that. Um, the reason being because it would be a new challenge for me. I'm an appalling dancer, so to learn to dance would actually be quite an, an interesting challenge. And also because I think it would be a great means to uh, put triathlon on, on the stage. You know, people would, the mainstream audience would look at me, who's this, or is the Ironman champion, what's Ironman? And you can get to ex- expose that, that, that mainstream audience to, to triathlon and to Ironman. So, yeah, I'd love to do something like, something like that if they were prepared to invest the time and energy that's needed to uh, ensure that I don't have two left feet. So after all this, it's been a crazy sort of trip journey for you, you know, your life in general. Are you happy? Yes. Really, really happy. Um, my lo- life's been like a tree and branched in so many weird and wonderful ways, some of which I never expected. It's been an amazing five years. I still have to pinch myself to believe what I've achieved. And this year I'm so happy that I've taken the decision to sit back and really appreciate how far I've come. Because I think myself and many athletes, I cross the finish line, I'm so excited, and then it's like, right, what's, what's next? You know, how fast, how much faster can I go? What more can I achieve? And I, I don't know if I ever step back and, actually took the time to meet people, you know, to sign autographs because I was too busy training and focusing on on the next goal. So this year has just given me the opportunity to enjoy being world champion and not only that, to use that platform, whether it's um, working with my charities, whether it's lobbying the government or whether it's interacting with people on a very personal one-to-one level. I'm also fortunate to be able to continue to work with my sponsors, and that's really important to me, and spend more time with my family and friends, get a little bit of balance back, and, and I'm enjoying it. I'm not getting much rest. It's not really rest here, just different activities.